Hey guys, welcome back. So today, uh, right now, it's a very exciting season here at Living Art. Uh, the blue tongue skinks are awake. They're starting to eat. I'm starting to pair them up. It is blue tongue skink breeding season. Um, my wife and I just went through and cleaned everybody, make sure everybody had fresh water, and now we're gonna feed them. So I figured this would be a great opportunity uh, for you guys to see how I feed 30 blue tongue skinks at once and what I feed them, what my routine is, because that's one of the most common questions that I get about the blue tongues is what do they eat? So stick around and see what I do. I'm Frank Payne, biology teacher, reptile breeder, and former zookeeper. I'm here to share with you my passion and experience working with these beautiful and fascinating animals. Welcome to Living Art. All right, let's get started. We got a lot of hungry skinks that need to be fed. So probably the main question I get is, what do we feed the skinks and what brand? So in general, I feed my blue tongue skinks and have been doing so for about 25 years is high quality dog food and cat food. I tend to feed the wet food the most. Um, the next question is what brand? Um, and, I, and I don't recommend a specific brand because I don't use a specific brand. I rotate a lot, I try new things. I do make sure I'm not buying cheap, um, kind of low quality brands, looking for higher quality stuff. Uh, brands that have very few uh, recalls uh, for safety and things like that. Um, in general, I feed the baby blue tongue skinks cat food. In general, I feed the adults dog food, but I do mix that up a lot. Everybody's getting cat food today. Um, the extra protein in the cat food is pretty good when they're coming out of not eating for basically three months, I think. But I'll, I'll, I'll switch it up all the time. I, in, in my experience, it really doesn't matter. Um, one thing I think is very important is not to overfeed your skinks. They, they can be gluttonous. They are prone to obesity. My adults I feed just once a week. The juveniles and babies I feed every other day. So today, I'm gonna to be feeding the Wegmans brand. Um, it's, I like to use the pate because it's just a lot easier to scoop out um, turkey and giblets and then I think there's some beef and liver. I don't really pay attention too much, um, I just variety. I try and mix it up a little bit. Um, and you'll see I also dust every feeding with uh, this mixture right here. Now this is my own kind of mixture where I take Rapashi Calcium Plus, which is an all-in-one supplement, but then I also cut it with um, some pure calcium and bee pollen. In general, it's like one half of this is Rapashi Calcium Plus, a quarter of it is pure calcium without D3, and another quarter is the, the fine powdered bee pollen. Often what I usually do, I don't do it all the time, um, but I also give just a tiny little, little couple drops of this stuff right here. This is Pangea Complete with Insects. Uh, gecko diet formula. I always have this on hand for some of my day geckos and gargoyle geckos and there's just a lot of really good stuff in here. It's very palatable as well so I usually just give a little squirt on top of their food because um, they seem to like it and I think just like a little bit of extra stuff there is good for them. And this is what I do right now. I've done a lot of different things over the years. Um, in my opinion using a high quality cat food and dog food is actually more healthy and more well-balanced than you trying to make a well-balanced diet. Um, the amount of time and money and research that goes into higher quality dog foods and, and cat foods is far more so than any hobbyist can do at home. Um, so I think that they're, they're pretty solid and they ha it has been proven over many years, over decades, um, that this stuff does work for blue tongue skinks and it does provide beautiful, healthy, hardy animals. All right, so I'm gonna get going here. Got a lot of skinks to feed. You'll see about how much I feed. It's gonna be about a teaspoon per animal. A little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what I think the condition of the animal is. If I feel they need to cut some pounds like I do, uh, then I'm gonna give them a little bit less. If I feel like they need a little bit of boost, they're looking a little skinny, I'll give them a little bit more, right? This is where it's about being a good keeper and observing your individual animals. All right, check it out.
right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed seeing me feed all of my blue tongues, including this big girl right here. This is Pocono. She is uh, pretty typical in terms of appearance. This is what is often called a classic northern. She does have some, uh, some dark, dark line uh, genetics in her. Um, what's special about her is that she is the biggest blue tongue that I have or have ever had. Um, she is, like all of my skinks, are northern blue tongue skinks from Australia. And this one is exactly or slightly over 24 inches long. So this is an actual two foot northern blue tongue skink. And sometimes they get that big, but this is, this is a pretty exceptionally large animal for this uh for this particular species and she's just an absolute sweetheart she's a great mom she's a great pet um like pretty much all blue tongue skinks really she's awesome um so just want to remind you that what you see me do like i'm not saying that this is the best way or the only way there are many ways that you can keep reptiles especially something as hardy and as adaptable as a blue tongue skink but this is what i do uh, this is what works best for me what i think is best for the animals I have been continuously keeping northern blue tongue skinks for 25 years, and I've been breeding them for nearly that long. I've learned a lot over that time, and I'm always learning more, uh, but I'm just here to share with you what works for me. So if you do something else that works for you, that's great. Um, I'm not saying this is the only way. This is just what works for me. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm gonna be doing a lot more blue tongue skink videos coming up, because like I said in the beginning, it is blue tongue skink breeding season. It's uh, late winter here in, Pennsylvania in the United States and that's when they're all starting to wake up and get ready to go. I'm working with some pretty exciting projects in terms of selective breeding for certain uh, patterns and colors, dark line stuff, oranges, whites, golds, that sort of thing. So I will be doing a lot more videos on that coming up. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.